Well, hey everybody. I'm back today working on computers again. And this will probably be my last one for quite a while. This one's number four. And uh, before I dive into this one too much, um, just going to tell you is that I'm going to do some comparison here. Not a wholly technical deep dive, but a little bit of you know the last four machines that I've been working on. So to start with, um, what you see here is my home theater PC. Um, this one goes in in the cabinet in the in the living room by the TV. We got a what a 48 inch old Sony Bravia, uh, nice one, but pre um, pre smart TV. And I know home theater PCs probably aren't a big deal anymore because shoot, you got streaming sticks and. Uh, the smart TVs have stuff built in and all of that. Um, this box is another one that I've had that's about 14 years old. And it's got a TV tuner card in it so you can do broadcast and, it, and record it to disc. I've got an antenna and I get broadcast stuff and we do streaming. When I built this, uh, Hulu was just starting out and we used to watch that. Um, it's pretty darn good for watching YouTube or, or other things. Um, I have it set up with a, a keyboard that's got a, um, it basically it's got, it's an IO gear, it's got a trackball in one corner and mouse buttons in the other, and it, so you can sit on the, uh, sit on the sofa in the living room and, and you can uh, browse the web or stream or watch YouTube or wherever you want. Also, it's got a, and again, I know technology's changing, but uh, it's got all the connections in the front. It's got a, a DVD read-write drive. It's got um, connectors for SD cards, for um, USB, for for all the common uh, flash cards. I was actually looking to see if it was even still available, and it looks like the company that made this one's probably out of business. This was N Media. But the nice thing about this case was that it would take a full-size card. Um, and a full-size ATX power supply, and then you could use a, um, a micro ATX um, motherboard. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna go into the comparison for a minute. You know, I've kind of lamented a little bit about having to throw away old computers and build new ones to uh, keep up with Windows 11. But you know, in truth, performance has changed a lot over the years. And even though the old ones seemed like they were working pretty good. You know, there have been a bunch of changes. So if you take a look here at my screen, um, these four units down at the bottom, these four line items, represent my old computers. And uh, they're in order of speed. There, there are a couple things here. There's one called CPU mark and one called GPU mark. That's the graphics and that's the proce CPU processing. And um, I went into Passmark's database and pulled off the data that I could Again, not to do a, a super deep dive, but just, hey, you know, roughly what are we talking about since I went through all these different builds. This original home piece theater PC was probably my slowest. It was um, AMD's first attempt at what they called an APU with onboard video, so I didn't have to use a video card. And being in a fairly small, confined space, I didn't want to run a card if I didn't have to. And it actually worked pretty well. Um, you certainly weren't going to do any gaming with it, but it um, it was pretty good. So this old dude was a four core, and the CPU started at 2340. Um, and today, my content creator at the top of the list, that's the fastest one, has a CPU mark of 51,000 and something. So many times different. And the same thing with video. My home theater PC down here in the 800, 500 range. Um, one column is 2D, which is kind of your general graphics, text, and so forth. And then the 3D is usually what you'll get into with gaming type stuff. So if you look at the 2D, you know, 2D is only doubled even though I went to a really fancy card because it, it's all it needed to be. And then the GPU, the 3D, you know, went from what, 900 was the slow end, and now I'm up at 27,000. I mean, you know, it's a multiple. It's, it's much better. Um, and then 
my general use computer before was a, a an X6 uh, Phenom AMD that I overclocked um, to 1090. I couldn't buy a 1090 chip, but it was late in the they were they were late in their production and the 1045 I cranked it up all the way, and so it was at 37. I had uh, one of these R7 uh, video cards, and um, and this was kind of our general use machine for many years that got replaced then by this Ryzen that has, you know, 10 times the CPU and about the same 2D performance and a little less, um, a little less 3D performance, but we really didn't need that. So now, um, this one that says old budget, um, I just, I replaced that with my budget machine here. And even there, you know, it was a i7 Intel, which was really good. It was a 7000 and it went to 21. So it's my budget machine is three times faster than my old machine. And my video, um, the database doesn't even show the video for those. Um, in that realm, it was pretty slow, but it was Intel's i7 on the chip. Anyway, it's just kind of take a look and you can see how they progressed. Um, the other side, I'll say from my home theater PC one, is it, the old one was running 100 watts, and the new chips are about 65, so it's less power being consumed. And it's a lot more powerful, so there's less time that you're going to need full power. So that should help this dude run a little bit cooler. There were times when if you were watching a movie or something where the, the uh, fans in this one could get pretty noisy. And I'm expecting now again with the increased capability that things will calm down a little bit. So for my new build, I mean these last four are the ones I just built. The budget was the last one I'll call it. For this build I bumped up from the 8500G to the 8600G. Um, it's still a six core unit. The uh, CPU is a little bit stronger. Not a lot, but a little bit stronger. Uh, but the videos um, a little bit stronger also and I thought for a home theater use it, it would probably be better. I could probably have used either one but I thought for this one yeah I'll bump it just a little bit further and then you can see like I say my general use machines a little more powerful um, even though I only left on, used on board so far that's been really working pretty well you know nobody's come and complained and said the video's slow because we're not playing fancy games. It's, you know, it's more like a business level, um, you know, spreadsheets and web browsing and stuff. And then this is the one I'm using on, you know, doing my uh, YouTube videos on. And man, that dude really, you know, it really cranks out the video. So I'm pretty happy, but you know, that one's, that one's pulling over 400 watts. Um, and this doesn't include the accessories and the hard drives and the everything else. This is just processor and video. So just thought it might be worth, you know, taking a look and, you know, as I'm deciding, you know, how to build things, one, you can see what 10 to 15 years difference makes uh, in the speed of the machines and the capability. And the other is just, you know, depending on what I'm doing, you know, if I was going to go build another one, this is kind of my guideline of where I'm, where I would be running at. So here we'll just put it in a different form. This is the CPU mark data just plotted out. And you can see that off to the right I've got the four my four older computers that were all built from you know the earliest about 2010 and up to about 2015. And you know the CPU power you know as you come to the left has come up a long way. So even the one that you call might call my budget computer now that's you know, an AM5 uh, AMD, that 8500G is a pretty nice performing machine. Now, the techies will dig in and tell you, hey, um, you know, the CPU mark is looking at all of the processor cores at once. These are multi-core processors, multi-threads. And so you also might need to go in and look at single thread performance if you're doing some single task uh, that's just... Uh, I'll say it runs a single thread, but in most cases, um, your computer's doing multiple things at one time. 
you know, your virus scanner's running a thread, your video card's running a thread, your, you know, so running multiple threads isn't a bad thing to look at. But you can just see that, you know, as I move to my content creator in gaming, you know, the power has really, really come up uh, very well. And then if I switch over to the GPUs, to the graphics units, um, and I'm just doing the, the GPU 3D performance because the 2D is fairly flat. Um, you know, again, you can see that my computers over on the right-hand side, my old, uh, old dogs, um, you know, didn't have a lot of 3D performance. The one that says old budget was an Intel i7 with its own onboard video that, uh, again, uh, if you're not playing fancy games, if you're just doing basic stuff, uh, you know, even, you know, watching videos on YouTube, you don't need a ton of 3D, uh, of 3D data. And it, you can see that my new computers, uh, you know, my budget one's not bad, my home theater one's better, my general use, I, I kept, you know, onboard video that uh, isn't ex extremely powerful and it's quite adequate. And then if you want to go for broke, you know, I, there are better cards than what I bought. Um, but that um, NVIDIA card there that's on the far left has tremendous amount of performance. And again, there are cards that are even better than that. Uh, it just depends on whether you need it for generating content like I do editing video um, or whether you're playing some strong games and you need the frame rates. And just really quickly, um, you know, here's what I used for motherboards. And I've been... Uh, using gigabytes now for quite a long time. I could use other boards, but I've had good success with them. I've only ever had one fail, and that was after about three or four years, 24-7. Um, you know, right now I'm using these that have got the B650 chip in them. Uh, they've got the right, the first one on the top there, uh, the Elite AX. I've got, you know, lots of capability and connections that did what I needed and handled the power. Um, I got the version 2 for my next build with a little less powerful CPU, but the board's just about equal in capability. Um, then I went to the bottom and I did my budget one, and that one I was trying to save some money went to a cheaper board, and it's a micro ATX uh, with a, a lot of the same features. It's just um, not quite as capable. And then the one I just picked for my home theater PC, which uh, is... Uh, another one like my first two it's just uh, the micro version and so it has a few less connections but it also had the uh, optical audio port which for the home theater there are some things I can do with that to uh, to connect in and just a point that all of these have videos posted with uh, more detail on the builds and so thanks for watching and uh, come on back and uh, you'll see me set up uh, more detail of the parts for this computer and the build and how I get uh, data transferred from the old hard drive uh, into the new uh, solid state and get the windows transferred over. So come back later. That's all for now.